the night and Vittorio is here and I know a lot of people are wondering how does the knight look like? Is he beautiful under the helmet or a complete monster? And how about shirtless Vittorio? Is he buff and hairy? Well, let's take a look first at the knight and sadly there is nothing inside the helmet but there is a reason why. The knight's face, unlike Oni, Trapper and Legion, is not part of the mask but instead the helmet is part of the head, which is the same case with Leatherface and Nurse. This means that the only way we can see the knight's face in the future is if they make a cosmetic for him that reveals his face, and based on the look of his neck, it looks like the knight is going to look undead just like his minions. So you probably saw how long the knight and Vittorio's lore is, and you probably didn't read it because it was too long, so don't worry because I will do a quick summary for both of them. The knight, who is called Tarhos Kovacs, was born in Hungary, so this is our very first Hungarian character in Dead by Daylight. His village was raided by enemies, and they took him as a slave to Italy. However, for some reason when he woke up in his burned village, he found something very attractive about it. Once he arrived on Italy, he started practicing his sword and craftsmanship skills with Kadir Hakam, and he joined the Guardia Campania, which is where the name of his power comes from. On that group, he found three people that were devoted to him. These guys are what end up becoming the minions that the knight can summon to help him in the trials, being the jailer, the carnifex and the assassin. And did you know each of them has a name and their own banner? In fact, you can see each of their banner in the lobby screen. The first one is the jailer, who is called Alejandro Santiago, so he is probably Spanish. Alejandro was the knight's armorer and this is reflected on his appearance. The jailer's banner is more metallic and gothic than the rest and his weapon of choice is a branding iron and it's very hard to see it in game but did you know this branding iron leaves a school mark? One interesting detail about the jailer is that he also has keys and a pier of anguish as part of his toolbed. For those of you that don't know what the second thing is, the Peer of Anguish is a medieval torture device which I won't explain how it tortures people in specific here but basically it expands when it's inside something. The second person to join the knight is the assassin who is called Durkos Malethek and he could be from Slovakia or Czech. Durkos was an expert in silent takedowns and very stealthy which is why his weapon of choice is a dagger. His banner is made out of wood spikes and cloth, which fits him well. The last person is Sander Raoult, the Carnifex. He was a big boy, possibly from Germany, and he ended up being the knight's executioner, rivaling him in size. The Carnifex is the strongest minion in his power, being able to break pallets and generators faster. His banner is the most brutal of all, featuring a skull on the top and his weapon of choice is a massive cleaver. The Carnifex visual design is also the most gruesome of the three minions as it features four zombie heads embedded inside his belly. There is no explanation as to why the knight and the minions all appear undead as they did not die when they were taken by the entity. So is this the entity torturing him or did they do this to themselves by choice? But what was the motivation of the knight? Well, what happened is that he became the best swordsman out of the group and he won countless of battles and was very apt with the sword. He got his freedom and he stopped being a slave and he became an official knight. However, he didn't want to work for nobody, so he left the Guardia Campania. But the leader refused to let the other three live with him. The knight then started to save up enough money in order to pay for the liberty of his loyal followers. So the knight was employed by a rich Italian duke of Porto Scuro Vittorio Toscano. Does the name sound familiar? Vittorio is the same survivor that appears in Dead by Daylight. So the knight worked for him back in the 14th century. But how is Vittorio from that age if his clothing and fashion style looks very modern and not very medieval at all? Well, let's talk about Vittorio now. Vittorio is by far one of the most interesting survivors in Dead by Daylight in my opinion. When he was alive, he was a philosopher and academic. He didn't want to become a knight and instead he became a scholar. He found some very interesting artifacts that belonged to strange cults 
and he wanted to find one that he called the Lapis Paradisus, and for that reason he contracted the knight. However, there was a conflict, and the knight ended up both stealing the stone as well as stealing all of the riches of Vittorio, as well as imprisoning him on a dungeon. Everyone saw the knight as this brutal monster who was not honorable or self-righteous at all, so they wanted him dead. The knight, however, was only interested in knowing the secrets of the stone, but Vittorio never revealed it to him. It went so far to the point that the knight was tired of Vittorio and decided to kill him, but he vanished in the fog forever. This happened in 1391, when Vittorio was 48 years old, making him the only character in the game where we know his exact age. So both Vittorio and the knight came from that specific year. How is it possible then for Vittorio to look this good? Well, the reason as to why, not only because he sells more, is because he was been in the fog for literally centuries. Just like Blight or the Observer, Victorio was in the entities realm before most of the killers and survivors in Dead by Daylight, so he is the most experienced one by far, explaining how he is able to conjure blue magic portals with his potential energy perk. And have you ever wondered what the tattoos of Vittorio mean? The tattoos have an actual meaning to them, but the meaning of it we don't know yet. In fact, in this recent Halloween tome, we found out that there are people in the world that have secrets tattooed in their own body with an unremovable ink, and these people are called human books, and Vittorio is one of them, and this detail is present in his shirtless naked model. You heard me right, Vittorio has a naked model torso just like the rest of the survivors, and as you can see here, he has a lot of tattoos showcasing weird things and mysteries that we don't know what they mean yet, and this is really cool. This render, made by Twitter user Marvy Bunny, showcases how Vittorio's tattoos would look like in-game, but what is the explanation as to why he looks very modern compared to the knight? Simple, the clothing of Vittorio does not belong to him, and instead it belongs to possibly other dead survivors. We know that he has been in this realm for a long time, so it's very possible that he simply took the clothes from someone else, and maybe Yunjin helped him with the hair? Vittorio and the knight are the third original duo that know about each other, the others being Legion with Jeff Johansen and Trickster with Jun Jin. Vittorio is also the first survivor we got to play that was part of the Entity Realm before we got to play as them, as the rest of survivors in the game are playable straight after they were taken by the Entity. And finally, let's talk about the map. The location of the map is in medieval Italy, and the Entity preserved it to be in a constant state of destruction and eeriness, which is perfection for the knight, as this is the vision he saw first back when he was captured as a slave, and this is what truly makes the knight happy. Let's remember the fact that maps are taken straight from the mind of the killers, which just shows how evil the knight truly is. And just as the last two quick fun facts, did you know that the outside buildings of the map, as well as the mill, are just black one-dimensional pictures, still, the effect and depth they give to the map is amazing, and I love the fact that we can see outside the walls, it makes this map feel massive, but what is truly massive is the sword of the night, because if you look up to the sky, you will be able to see how truly big this sword is. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and have a nice day!